Welcome to the Real Estate Sit Down presented by Double B Homes. My name is Blair Berg, and today I am joined by Jackson Donnell, and we're going to be talking about the life as a new real estate agent. Thanks for coming on, Jackson. Yeah, thanks for having me. So, just right off the bat, before real estate, what did you do for school? Uh, so that's kind of a good question. I, when I was graduating high school, um, we had to do like a job shadow. Okay. So, like, in order to graduate, you had to like job shadow somebody and. Kind of like throughout high school, I'd always, you know, thought about, you know, being in real estate. Um, I've had a few friends, dads who are very successful at what they do. Mm -hmm. Um, And then, so when I did this job shadow, it was kind of, it's kind of just like one of those things that like, you just pick something to do, just kind of like get it done. Yeah. And so I had one of my uh, friend's mom, she was a real estate agent and like you spend the day with them. And so like for my day with her and she wasn't like you know by any means like a full-time real estate agent yeah and so like i joined or i I, uh i followed her around on that day and you know she was showing some you know hundred fifty thousand dollar two hundred thousand dollar townhomes and then um just kind of like seeing her work environment it just didn't really you know like fulfill that kind of idea in my head of what i thought like real estate was going to be yeah compared to like you know, I have another, a few other friends, dads who are like very successful, own like hundreds of properties, um, real estate investors, stuff like that. And, uh, so after I kind of did that, um, that kind of like deterred me away from being a real estate agent for a little bit. Um, so I ended up going to community college for uh, a year and a half, um, ended up getting connected again with one of my friends, dads. Um, he kind of set me up. He's like, here's what you need to do. Take your classes when you're done, let me know. Um, and then, so yeah, after, after that, I went to, you know, I kind of, I didn't finish my two years at Normandale, but, uh, jumped into getting some classes done. Um, I was working part-time, you know, at a restaurant, just trying to, you know, make some extra money. Yep. Um, so yeah, I mean, it took me probably honestly a year and a half to finish my classes. Okay. Um, so yeah, I mean, that was kind of, you know, what kickstarted it, uh, from the get-go was just, you know, having been surrounded by people who were in real estate and then um, just kind of putting myself in the right direction with the right people. So, yeah. And I think in real estate too, your network is huge, right? like who you surround yourself with. Um, but we'll probably touch on that in a little bit. So with you spreading out your classes over a year and a half, did you pass your test on the first time? So I passed the state test the first time. The national test took me four tries. Damn. So the first time I wasn't even close. Second time, I got like, cause you need a 75 to pass. Yeah. Second time I got a 73 and then, so that I took it, the second time was in December. And then at the beginning of the year, they rewrote the test by a new test company. So yeah. everything that I had just learned and like, eventually you take the test, you know, you took, I took it twice. Yep. So you come, become very familiar with like the questions, stuff like that. You start to memorize them. I was like, all right, third time, this is going to be a breeze. Then they rewrote the test with a new test company. Took it a third time, missed it by one question. Damn. And then my fourth time, I finally passed it. Yeah, and that's funny too, because the, the only reason I ask is I just imagine it would be so hard for me to remember all that stuff oh, if yeah. I spread it out over a year and a half. Because mm-hmm. I think I was in like a rush to get it done because I had already, um, a team had kind of already picked me up. Right. And they're like, how fast can you get your classes done? Mm-hmm. So I think I got all my classes done like a month. Wow. And it was like, and it was like I had to pass my first try because they're like, we expect you to start on January 1st. Right. And I think I got licensed on December 20th. Wow. So like I had like the Christmas break off. But, and that's, I think literally only because I, it was so fresh in my brain because I had to jam it all in at one time. Right. Like, I think I was up against like, I think you had to get like for class time, since I did it online, you had to do, you could only do eight hours a day. I yeah. think after that it would, you can't do anymore. Yeah. Cause um, it like stops you. Yeah. A certain amount of time. So I think I was like doing the maximum I could every day just to like get it done. Um, cause I'm a terrible, like studier yeah i'm better at test taking but studying i'm not very good at um so then i'm guessing what got you interested in like getting into real estate like i said i know you said you had you know buddy's parents that did it Mm -hmm. and were really successful at it um i guess what kind of drew you to that was it just like the success aspect of it uh it was it was that and then just i've always one, I've known that I've always known that I've always wanted to work for myself. Yeah. 
Um, I don't really do well with other people telling me what to do. Mm -hmm. Um, so like being micromanaged by some like nine to five, um, I just always, you know, thought that, you know, like someday I could, uh, put myself to my full potential by, you know, owning my own business or having my own career in a job that, um, allows me to do that. And then yep. like, obviously the money is a great part of like being in real estate, but, mm -hmm. um, I was just talking to my girlfriend the other day and I said, you know, even if I made 50 grand in a year or 500 grand in a year, you can take me away from this job just because I don't think I could go to a nine to five. Like if, if you paid me a 200 K salary at a nine to five, I think I'd still come back. Like I'd still rather be in real estate and make 75 grand a year. Like, I agree. I agree. Cause I, and it's funny that you mentioned that too, because I, I and I'm sure you are too, but I'm in like so many mastermind groups on like Facebook and stuff. Right. And I think most of those just end up kind of being cesspools of people complaining, right. but there was one person who's like, you know, I'm thinking about quitting real estate and going back to a nine to five because people talk about, you know, controlling your own schedule. Well, then you end up working, you know, 50, 60 hours a week instead of the 40, just so you can say that you have freedom, which in my eyes, I'd rather do 50 for myself than 40 100%. for somebody else. Like, cause it's like, am I working more hours? Probably like at the end of the week, I've probably worked way more than 40 hours, but it's like, I can do it at my own pace. Right. It, where I, I want to do it right like I can do it at home like even right now I'm doing the continuing education stuff which it's always I wait till the last second and it's, and it's always during the busiest season right so I feel like I'm missing out on a lot of work by doing it but it's like I can do that outside at my house I don't have to be in an office and I love being out showing houses negotiating deals like and at the end of the day knowing like I'm building something for myself right so it's like I yeah like you said I'd rather no matter if I was making a little bit, a lot, I wouldn't trade that for a nine to five. And right. in, I think it's a little different. It sounds like you did it. Like it was kind of your first like career type job. I mean, yeah. you said you're working some part-time stuff for some extra money, but I've been in the nine to five and it's funny in college. I kind of thought that's what I wanted to do. Right. I uh, got my degree in business administration. And I thought like I was going to wear a suit and go to work yeah. nine to five. And I hated that. Yeah. It's like in, there's just so much, there's too many cooks in the kitchen. I feel like in so many office jobs where it's like they like the sales, people have this goal, the administration has this goal and they don't mesh. So there's so much infighting where it's like, I just want it to be me and right. I can make the decisions. So, yeah, I agree 100%. I mean, and even like going back to that, like, you know, even, you know, you know, I say, even if I made 50 K here, 150 K a year, like, or $500,000 a year, like the, there's never a point in real estate where you can't go out and find more business. And I think like, that's the biggest piece for it. Like for me too, is like, like you can just, all you have to do is just pick up the phone and make like, you know what you need to do to make more money. Like there's no secret like button that, um, that's rewriting. Like, you know, there's no, you know, you know what I'm saying? Like there's no, yeah. there's no secret to, to success. It's, it's literally just kind of doing the work. And I think that's what I enjoy the most about it. It's like, you kind of just, once you start to put the work in and then you see it happen, like it's just, it's, it's just addicting. Like, mm -hmm. oh, I definitely agree. Especially like when you find your niche and like you find the things you like to do. Right. Cause like you said, there are different avenues to bring in business. And I think once you find the thing that kind of clicks for you, then you're having fun. Right. So, um, and that's a good segue into kind of what we're talking about. So being a new agent, what, like, what did you find to be the biggest struggle when you first started out? Yeah, that's a great question because I would say that my segue in the real estate industry was, I guess I wouldn't say it's a lot different than, you know, a lot of other people's. Um, but it just took me a long time to kind of find the right pathway. Um, I've been licensed for, th you know, three and a half years now, but I've only been a full-time agent for, you know, a year and a half. Um, and then the, those first two years, I was just kind of, you know, doing it part time, but, um, well, I guess I should back up. So you got licensed. Yep. Then did you join a team right away? Did you join a broke, like yeah, what brokerage? So, so I joined, um, exit realty, uh, okay. Metro and Lakeville. And so like when I was, I ended up not joining the, uh, my friend's dad. Um, I was honestly pretty embarrassed that it took me so long to get licensed. Um, so I didn't even, and then, so I'd gotten connected with two kids that I went to, well, 
a friend that I went to high school with, there was a couple kids like probably five years older than me that were, you know, doing really well. And I thought it would be a good opportunity to like, you know, join up with somebody who's, you know, kind of more my age, um, that I can relate to a little bit more. Um, and so I joined up with them. It wasn't a team. There was no leads. There was no like real aspect or formality of like what I should be doing to, yeah. you know, like those money making activities. Um, I really wasn't doing anything. I was just like, I no no one told me what to do. So I yeah. didn't know what to do. I would just sit on the MLS and like find houses and try to post on it. Like, make up market updates. Well, and that's what I think too is funny that I was just talking about this recently. It's you spend so much time um, studying for the test, right? which is great. I mean, there's a lot of good legal information in there, but then I think so many new agents, if they get put in the wrong environment right out of school, they're like, you're sitting at a desk and you're like, all right, where are the houses? Right. Like where are the buyers? Where are the sellers? Cause it's like the test you take doesn't prepare you for the no. job aspect at all. No. It's more to just cover your legal basis as you're doing business. How many but, square feet are in an acre? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So it's like, I think so many people like, yeah, if you join a team where you're not getting leads or mentorship, it's like, all right, now what? Well, that's why they say 90, like I remember being in that class, like, cause I, I did the first class in person and he's like 90, probably 95% of you won't, won't make it. Yeah. And I, I just remember thinking, looking around the class, I was like, all right, I can see me, like me and like two other people who are, could possibly make it out of this class. Yeah. And which is funny because it's me and those two other people yeah. that I've actually seen. Like, I mean, once you kind of like get in the, in the industry, you kind of know people, you know? Yeah. And so like he, he still crushes it. Like he's got a niche of like a multifamily stuff and, um, another girl that was in our class, she still works. Uh, she actually joined the same place where I was at exit realty and mm. she, she does well herself, but, um, yeah, sorry to cut you off, but yeah, no. So I, so I ended up, you know, finally passing my test, um, joined up with, you know, two kids that were, you know, they were great at what they were doing. Um, they just weren't really great at teaching me how to do it. It was kind mm-hmm. of like, I'd always go to them and be like, Oh, how'd you get that? How'd you get that listing? Or where'd you find that buyer? And it was always like, Oh, it was a referral of, you know, this person or that person. And it wasn't like, you know, I just really had no, like, like I said, there was no, you know, money making activities, like going through expired, it's calling for sale by owners. Like no one really told me to like do any of that because they didn't do that. Like, um, they just kind of, you know, ended up making a business out of just like a sphere based thing that just kind of, you know, trickled into referrals. Um, and you know, they, they joined a little bit. They, so they joined, you know, out of college. So they're already a little bit older when I got licensed. I yep. think I was 22. So like being so young in the industry, like, you know, none of my friends were really buying at the time. You know, it's hard to, you know, I had plenty of my friends' parents sell their house. Like, and then once you kind of get into it, you're like, well, why would they choose me? Like, I, you know, I just got licensed and yep. they, you know, it kind of feels like everybody kind of knows somebody in real estate, but then, um, you know, going off of that, like you work with so many people that you think they would know that has an agent, but they don't. Yeah. Um, it's funny that you say that too. And, and not the name drop, but I think I know kind of, uh, the buddies you're talking about and yeah. they do have a bigger, like local representation, like, uh, reputation. 100%. So it's like, they can build a business off of that. Right. Um, cause they're kind of local right. celebs in Lakeville. Yeah. So, um, I mean, one of them, he played basketball at a pretty high level. Yep. So, I mean, they know people. Right. Um, and I mean, and that, I think I kind of got a disillusion too when I first got into real estate cause my mom is a real estate agent, mm-hmm. um, and kind of has the same thing between her and my stepdad. I mean, my stepdad grew up in Farmington. He's never left. He had his like full-time job. He knows every single person in Farmington. Like right. he was the homecoming king in Farmington. So it's like between those two, my mom doesn't have to do a ton of lead gen. Mm -hmm. And it's funny too. I do think that a lot of people think my mom being a successful real estate agent would be a benefit to me. And I I think it's kind of a wash because the part where (laughs) I think she would help is like people, she's been doing it longer than I have. So people that I would consider in my sphere are already doing business with her. Right. So I kind of have to carve out my own niche. I mean, my older brother has friends that 
go to her. Right. Because they've already bought and sold with her before. Mm -hmm. So it's like I have to find like my own way. So it's like we really don't. I mean, we'll talk business every once in a while, but it's not like we're helping each other out or like I she's throwing me referrals because she has her own business to run. Um, So I think it's kind of reverse of like I know with Parker, our team lead in his dad, Steve, I think Steve, um, I think helped Parker quite a bit in the beginning, but that's because they're partnered up. 100%. And we just, I mean, my mom is like, from the very beginning, she's like, I don't really have anything to offer you because I don't do, like, you're not going to learn much because right. all mine's network stuff. Right. Um, so, yeah, I think that's, I think, like you said, the biggest, one of the biggest challenges right away is just like where the leads come from. Right. And, you know, going back to just, you know, and, the, and I, I'm so stubborn to the point where, like, I thought that, like, by me just, like, being on that, like, it was just going to come to me. Like, eventually, like, it was just going to work out. Like, I just need to stay into it for a little bit. Like, I've always known that, like, you know, they say on average uh, an agent in their first year sells, like, what, maybe, like, three to six homes maybe. It's pretty or, small. Yeah, yeah, or something like that. Um, and so, fortunately, I mean, right off the bat, I had uh, – my friend's, my best friend's sister, she trusted me to be her, you know, real estate agent, um, struggled through a transaction with her. I didn't even know how to write a purchase agreement at that point. Mm-hmm. Like I was like, cause I mean, they teach you how to do that in school, but like when you're looking at it, but, it's literally gibberish to you. Like, yeah. And, and so like when I got through that, you know, I had, I did one deal within my first month. I was like, Oh, this is cool. Like, this is going to keep happening. Yeah. Six oh, months. If I do once, if I do one a month for my first year, that's 12. That's right, pretty exactly. good for a first time agent. So, and like six months go by, I'm not really doing any lead gen activities, you know, in the day to day. Um, you know, that was the, that check was like the most amount of money I've ever had in my life too, mm-hmm. which like, um, which was, which was cool. But then, you know, it goes, it goes away pretty quickly. Um, so, and you know, Back then when I was 22, I didn't really have a lot of bills. Like, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, just kind of getting in my own way of being so stubborn that, like, you know, it, if, after that kind of six months and then I had one more deal trickle in um, and then a year passed by, a year and a half, I had done, you know, one off market, you know, tiny little $175,000 house that was like a total rehab. Um, but I was to the point where it was like, all right, you either need to figure this out, make a switch, or you need to like completely switch careers altogether. Yeah. And so I had gotten connected with a good friend. Well, so I actually helped her get into like help her, you know, get her license, stuff like that. Um, she's a friend from Burnsville. She wasn't on the team or she had left the team before you got here, but Maddie Barda. Okay. Um, so she, I helped her get her license. She joined Edina Realty right away. And then within six months, she wasn't selling enough homes, like jumped ship, um, joined with the Pemberton homes team. Um, and then I just noticed like she was just crushing it like right away. She was, Mm -hmm. you know, getting listings, getting buyers, like all this other stuff. And I like the competitive person in me, was like, all right, what the fuck? Yeah. Like I want to do that. So then, Mm -hmm. uh, asked her to get coffee and she was like, yeah, like it's, I, I wouldn't change it for a second. Joined, um, joined the Pemberton homes team. And then, so after we got coffee, I met with Parker. Um, and he's like, yeah, there's, there's no reason why you shouldn't sell, you know, 15 plus homes in your first year. So, yep. um, which was true. I went from, you know, three deals in two years to 15 homes last year, which mm-hmm. completely changed my life. Yeah. Which 15 homes is still a good amount. Right. I mean, if you look, cause I think you said too, it's funny that because of social media and the way our algorithms work, because we're in real estate, we see it looks like, you're like, God damn, everyone is a real estate agent. Right. So you think, well, I'm already fighting an uphill battle because everyone knows a real estate agent, obviously. But mm-hmm. then you kind of come to find out that because they're not in real estate, their algorithms don't look like that. Right. They don't know a ton of real estate agents like you think that they do. Right. Um, we only see that because that's our business. And... So that's why, I mean, part of my goal of this year has been I've kind of converted over to social media because, and my strategy right now is just like smother people with my presence. Right. (laughs) Because. Which is what you need to do. Because, yeah, and it's, and it's because, I mean, 
some people might find it annoying, yes. But the whole point is it's not even the information they take away from your post. It's just, it's the, just the fact that they see you and they associate your face and your name with real estate. So when it comes to buy or sell, they're like, oh, who's that guy who annoys me all the time on right. social media? It's the Chris Lindahl thing. Right. It, and it's because, I mean, and if for people that not in Minnesota watching, Chris <laughs> Lindahl is a fairly large presence in the real estate industry in Minnesota. But that's because he's everywhere. Right. And it's like you see his billboards and you're annoyed by him, but it's like it works right? because you know his name. right? Um, hence yep. my mustache uh, being on social media. So that's kind of <laughs> like my thing. It's like, God, that's ugly. But you remember it and you're talking about it. Um, right. So I think that's huge is just like making your presence known to people. And like we had a conversation the other day about real estate is a lot of a time in the game thing. 100%. Like, no matter what you do your first year, two years, it's going to be a grind. 100%. It's going to be a grind. Like I said, unless you have that local reputation, that pull where people are just going to go with you. Maybe you got a, you know, a family that's pretty well known in your hometown. But it's going to be a grind. But you'll find out when you get to year five, year seven, you're getting a lot of repeats and referrals because of the time spent in the game. Because people can learn to associate you with real estate. Because in the beginning... I think a lot of people do know it's like people will get into real estate and it's like a part-time hobby mm -hmm. almost, or 95% of people don't make it past their first year. So if you don't keep on reminding the public that you're in real estate, they might just think that you switched careers. Right. In today's consumer, I mean, and we're included in that. It's like we have the attention span of like a goldfish. And if, I don't see what's happening to you on social media. You might have like disappeared from the earth. I don't know. Right. <laughs> Unfortunately, yeah. that's just how it no, is. No, 100%. But like going off of that, like even just, you know, year three now, like, and even I guess year two, like, and even kind of like my first year, people like, I was just present kind of like on social media a little bit. And um, I was probably one of the first real estate agents for like my grade or mm -hmm. like my kind of, you know, the people in my age era i mean that's you know one because i didn't go to college um and just got my real estate license right away but people just started like asking me all the time like oh how's real estate going how's real estate going and you know that first year or two i was like i'll just make shit up and it'd be like oh it's going great like you know this that and another um but now like i'm starting to see that trickle effect like if i'm out somewhere and i, I i'd say that this is like kind of like one of my least favorite things now is when like say i'm out like when i was in mexico like people know that I'm a real estate agent, so they want to talk about real estate with me. And then mix in a few drinks. I will not shut up about real estate. Yeah. And like, I'm sure it's so obnoxious, but like people love to like hear about it. They do. It's Cause, surprising. Because it, I personally really like the investment side of real estate. Same. And like how easy, really, I mean, how really easy it is to make a lot of money just by investing in real estate. Mm -hmm. Like. And so like you start to t talk to people, you know, you buy one a year, you buy another one and then, you know, 10 years you come back and then you 1031 exchange that one for like, you know, two or three more. And then you do that over and over again. And then you can retire by your four by 40. And then, you know, people hear that and it kind of just goes over the head. But I mean, it, it does work. And um, just, you know, even being out, people, you know, always ask me, that's like the first thing that they ask me about now is like, oh, how's real estate going like this, that and another and um, it's, it's pretty cool to see. So, yeah. And I think a lot of times new agents think that they have to be salesy to connect right. with their sphere and you really don't No, especially when you have time in the game. And another reason I think branding is so important. Cause like this sweatshirt, like I have sweatshirts, t-shirts, polos, mm -hmm. hats, all that stuff that I wear out. I mean, this is a sweatshirt that's nice enough. I mean, bars around where we live, I wear this sweatshirt right. out and at some point in the night, real estate will come up and it's not because I brought it up. Exactly. And it is funny because I'll even like say multiple times, I'm like, I'm like, if you're bored with what I'm saying, like, tell me to shut up. Because <laughs> like, I'll just keep talking. I'm like, if you, if, if I get boring at some point, just tell me and I'll stop. And people are like, usually like egging me on to right. learn more. And I've had conversations with other agents too, where it's like, I, it's very hard to associate an ROI with a lot of the things I do that is like lead gen because I do think a lot of it is just like because of my presence in being in real estate, I've noticed a lot more of my friends asking me to get set up on a home search, asking me about investment properties, and then they end up buying something. Um, and I think I could equate that to 
my social media presence, but I can't right. say it's for sure. But I think it's because when you're out there voicing all the time how easy it is to get into real estate, then the wheels start turning. Then friends you already have are like, oh, I could get into this. It's not that hard. I mean, I'm helping a buddy right now, and we found a place that he liked. And I almost feel like he's dragging out the process, and he's made the comment to me so many times. He's like, I didn't think it would be that easy. Right. And, like, he's already pre-approved. And it's like – I think he's slow playing getting this condo that he likes because he's like, it seemed too easy and he thought it should be hard. Right. Yeah. And like, um, just kind of going back to that, like people just don't know, like this, this is new news actually as of last night, we just bought a fourplex. Oh, nice. So we got that under congrats and you just got that last night. Yeah. Last night. That's awesome. So we just got a fourplex last night. And so like we, my girlfriend and I, we, you know, got approved and which was super easy because the rents that were on this were, it follows the 1% rule, yep. like fairly close. That's awesome. So, yeah. Which is hard. I mean, was this on market? No, it was off market. Okay. I was going to say, cause on market getting a 1% is like almost impossible. Right. So that's great. So, but I was working with my, like, cause I was thinking about this as like a marketing tool because, um, like we got approved and it was, it was fine, but I was going back to it and I was thinking, I was like, I went to my mortgage line and I was like, what was the minimum dollar amount? that you could have made to buy, to purchase this property. It's a $650,000 fourplex and the rents are at, there's four of them. So it's 1500. So cash flow is at 6,000 a month. Um, and so if you were to own or occupy it, which that's how we bought it. And, uh, you already have three units at 4,500, you know, mortgage lender can use 70% of that. So it's like 3750 or something like that. Um, so you would really only have to be response. So then, but the monthly mortgage payment with three and a half percent down FHA, because you have to do FHA three and a half percent down is the only way you can buy a fourplex owner occupied. Yep. Um, so you'd really only have to be responsible for, you know, around a thousand dollars a month, I think is what the monthly mortgage p- payment came out to. Um, he re re ran the numbers and you know, you only had to make $55,000 to purchase that property. Yep. Which people don't know that they look at that and they see this, Six hundred and fifty thousand dollar fourplex. That's five thousand square feet, and they think no way. Like, yeah. Especially for like, I mean, some people are you know doing great in their careers. I've you know helped a few friends buy you know really nice houses. Yeah. Um, but like some you know your first job, you're not getting you know approved for a six hundred and fifty thousand dollar. But people just don't know that aspect of the game. Yeah. Where like you can use these rents to you know go towards your financing and help you get approved for more money. And that's another thing. So and like, then now you're living for probably cheaper than you were before Yeah. With that, with that. And that's where it's like when you post something, it's like, oh, you can, you know, own for cheaper than rent. Everyone's like, no, you can't. Not in this market with a high interest rates. And it's like, you can. There are ways. Like owning a multifamily property is maybe you don't really want to be a landlord in that kind of thing. But it's for your first home. And then if you hang on to that when you go to buy your next home and it's your single family home and you rent out that last unit, that you're, that's income. 100%. And, and it's an asset. Going back to that, I actually did the numbers wrong. It's So the monthly mortgage payment was like 4800 bucks with today's interest rates. So you would only need to be responsible for 300 bucks. So 300 bucks, you get to own a fourplex. And then once you, you, you could move out of that thing in six months and go find another one. And just imagine when you refi that. Right, exactly. Like, and so you rent that fourth one for, you know, another 1500, you know, you're already at 1300 with a 7% interest rate, refinance that thing down to 5%, you know, that monthly mortgage payment's going to go down to, you know, 38. And then you're at, you know, over two grand a month. That's $24,000 a year in net income. Yeah. Which is amazing. That's exciting. That congrats again on that. Cause that is sweet. That's a sweet deal. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, uh, you already kind of talked about what brought you to the Pemberton home team. And so are there any like last like struggles or anything that you want to touch on before we kind of move on? Yeah. I mean, I think this one's kind of like a funny one. Um, but being like a new agent, like you do kind of get bullied a little bit by, oh, yeah. you know, more seasoned agents and it, you know, it is what it is. If you know, there's going to be those people who have been in the industry for 40 years. And for those of you who don't know, we can look up, you know, other agents and see how many deals they've done this, that, another. And, um, you know, having still being new, like 15 de- last year, like they still see that. And cause like a good agent, like a hustling agent, you know, 30 houses a year is, is good. Oh yeah. But Especially like, in current conditions. Right. And then there's some people out there who, you know, sell 80 plus houses a year and 
Um, but yeah, I mean, there's going to be those people who have been in the industry for, you know, they tell you, I've, well, I've been doing this for, you know, 25 years, this, that, and other. It's like, that's cool. I don't like, that. I don't really care. Like I probably can market myself better than you can just yeah. because of the way, you know, that the you know life's going and it's switching to, you know, an online, you know, social media presence. So, um, but there's, I mean, it's a, it's like a facade, but it's like a real thing. Like, yeah, I was, uh, I was listing my, uh, parents house the other day and I was talking to this guy about a backup offer and stuff like that. I let him know that his offer wasn't accepted. Um, and this, that, and that. And then he just like was going off about like asking me how long I've been in the business. Like how many deals have I done? I was like, dude, this really has nothing. I know you're probably salty cause I didn't accept your offer, but yeah. this is, this has nothing to do with like the transaction at all. Yeah. Like if you were, to, if you probably would have, you know, actually just vouched for his clients a little bit and like, even in his like offer email, there's nothing about his clients. It was everything about how long he's been in the industry, how long he's been working with his mortgage partner, partner which that's great. Like that's, yeah. that's cool. But yeah. at the same time, like I've won deals. This is actually how I met my girlfriend. Well, not really, but I, when I got my girlfriend her first house, like I was up till 1030 at night on the list, on the phone with the listing agent, like telling him like how good of a pre-approved buyer she is, like all this stuff. And then, so he accepted my offer because of my communication and like my willingness to like put my client forward. And he's like, cause we offer, he's like you, we offer, we took yours over one that was 15,000 higher than yours just because of your communication. And that was like, I'd still say that was probably one of my more exciting deals that I was proud of because it was something that like I did and it wasn't just like her price that like won the house. Yeah. And that's, and I think that is a huge shift because it's funny for anyone who follows the YouTube page, I have multiple posts that are kind of making fun of the guys who are like, I've been doing this for 30 years because it's like, it doesn't matter. Mm -mm. It doesn't matter. It's like, I do plenty of business Mm -hmm. and it's like, I know this market just as well as you. It's right. like, and it's, I think it's also funny when you have the listing and then they want to attack your, your business acumen. You're like, I've got what you want. <laughs> right. So exactly. that's not how this works. Right. You're not going to bully me into accepting a worse offer. And like you said, I, I know for a fact there's deals that I've won because of my communication. And 100%. it's like, because old school agents, there are still some that, won't they don't even call they just submit the offer and don't call right there's been a couple i won one last week um and the guy just like yeah we had another offer come in the guy didn't even call me he's like and i can't get him on the phone and so it's like we're just going to work with you on your offer and we like kind of negotiated ours to kind of get it where it needed to be but because i am willing to talk with people and befriend people and i even to the point our community is so small that if you're really doing business, you're going to run into the people again. Like if the guy, if the person on the other end of the line and you, you're doing plenty of business, you're probably going to run into them again because Mm -hmm. there are some people who do it more part-time kind of as a hobby that don't do a ton, but the people who are listing and buying a lot of homes, you'll run into them again. So I always try to make sure that it's as pleasant as can be. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'll butt heads with an agent if I have to, like if they're being combatant and I need to like get this deal through, um, cause it's like, I'm always working for my client first and foremost. 100%. So like, if it comes to a point where I have to, you know, kind of put on a mean face for a little bit to get something across, that's fine. Cause it's for my client. But even at the end of a deal that's done well, I ask for a view from my client and the opposing agent mm-hmm. and I'll leave them a good one too. Yeah. Um, just because there have been deals where I run into a similar, uh, an agent I've worked with already. Mm-hmm. And then we kind of know each other's communication styles and that just helps yeah. win the deal. So and I think by in making sure it's a win-win on both sides, not only it helps the deal, but it's going to help you in future deals because if you run into that person again, they're going to remember that. 100%. I would say that's like the only thing, you know, being a new agent, that's probably like the most annoying. So there's a lot of good stuff on that episode and we ran a little long. So please join us next week for part two as we talk about the life of a new real estate agent. And as always, please remember to like and subscribe.